A reading from the Franciscan Book of Saints, January 20th, the servant of God, Jane of St. Erasmus, widow, second order. Born in the year 1575, Jane descended from a distinguished family in Hainaut. She became a model to Christian women in the secular as well as in the religious state. After a pious youth spent in innocence, she was married in her 28th year to a nobleman of the Netherlands, Erasmus of Schengen, whose family, at the time when forceful attempts were being made to introduce the Calvinist heresy in the Netherlands, had nevertheless remained true to the Catholic faith. Erasmus occupied a high rank in the army of the King of Spain, to whom the Netherlands belonged at that time. The marriage was blessed with the birth of a little daughter, whom Almighty God called very early to himself. Jane had very little comfort in her husband. He loved society and games of chance, and his vanity and ambition often caused him to be involved in bloody quarrels. His good wife endeavoured to win his heart. She settled many of his disputes, and once even cast herself between two drawn swords in a duel. She sought strength and consolation in her communion with God, with whom she conversed like a child with its father. She was much devoted to prayer. When she was at prayer, she experienced neither hunger nor thirst, neither cold nor heat. Yet she did not on that account neglect any of her household duties. With all courtesy, she also received the company who were at times invited at the wish of her husband, and added to that, she was a true mother to the poor and the sick. Such virtue caused her husband to be converted to better ways. A true believer at heart, as he had always been, he resolved to make a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. He returned from there a pious Christian. During his absence, his devoted wife experienced a mighty impulse to enter the convent, and after severely testing her vocation, she believed the call came from heaven. Upon the return of her husband, she asked him for leave to follow the call. But having since his conversion learned to value his virtuous wife, he did not want to hear of a separation. But Jane continued to plead, and as her vocation was approved by the most experienced directors in the spiritual life, even the Archbishop of Cambrai supporting her petition, her husband at length resolved on his part to make the sacrifice to God. He himself accompanied his wife to the convent of Philippeville, where the rule of St. Clair was observed in its primitive vigour. Although she was already 55 years old, Jane cheerfully observed the strictest practices of the novices, went barefoot, and looked upon herself as the lowliest servant in the convent. In gratitude to her husband, who permitted her to enter, she called herself by his name, Jane of St. Erasmus. She pledged him the best of all her merits, and also offered, when his death drew near, to suffer his purgatory. Jane survived for nineteen years, a model for everyone in the convent. She experienced extraordinary graces from God. Frequently she was seen in ecstasy and raised above the earth. If she so much as glanced at a picture of our Lord at the pillar of the scourging which hung in the choir, she broke out in tears of the tenderest compassion. When it was forbidden her to look at it any more, she never again directed her glance in that direction, because she held obedience in greater esteem than sentiments of devotion. At last she was tried by long and painful suffering in all the members of her body, in that condition, a glance at the image of the crucified was her dearest comfort. Looking at it, she used to say the little prayer, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, may this victorious title protect us and preserve us from all evil. She actually had the prayer on her lips and was raising her hand in order to make the sign of the cross as she said it, when our Lord took unto himself the soul that had been found so faithful. It was in the year 1649. A Reflection on Perseverance in Prayer Consider how faithfully the servant of God Jane observed the admonition of our Divine Saviour. We ought to pray and not to faint. Luke 18.1 In every situation in life she sought by means of prayer to obtain the necessary help from heaven, and her prayer was not in vain. Through prayer she preserved her innocence in all the dangers of her youth. Through prayer she obtained in the married state the conversion of her husband. Through prayer she rose to the highest perfection in the convent. 
Do you in like manner avail yourself of the divine assistance in every situation? Do you always endeavor to obtain it through prayer? Consider how this servant of God persevered in prayer in various situations of life. Never did she allow her usual devotion to suffer. Her devotion was always so lively that she appeared to notice nothing of what was going on about her. At the same time she fulfilled her household duties with fidelity, since prayer cannot otherwise be pleasing to God. And in difficult situations, as when she felt the call to the religious life, she redoubled her prayers and pleaded with ever greater confidence until God heard her. Have you been as persevering in the past in your daily prayers, in their devout performance, in the faithful fulfillment of your duties, in special exercises of devotion? He that wavers and has no confidence, let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. James 1.7 Especially do we need persevering prayer in the time of suffering, whether it be exterior or interior. In her long and painful illnesses, therefore, Jane did not desist from recourse to God in short prayers and from keeping before her eyes the passion of Christ. As meritorious as suffering can be, we must remember that without special divine assistance, we cannot gain that merit, but may very easily make ourselves displeasing to God. Therefore, St. James admonishes us, Is any of you sad? Let him pray. James 5.13 In tribulations and temptations, call upon the Lord. Do you observe this admonition? Prayer of the Church Lord Jesus Christ, who in the Garden of Olives has taught us by word and example to pray in order that we may overcome the dangers of temptation. Grant us the grace that we may always be devoted to prayer and may merit to obtain its abundant fruits. Who livest and reignest for ever and ever. Amen.